Hey team, Charlene Giordano here. Welcome to May. May, May, May. So many things happening. Um, as I shared with you guys in a video last week when I talked about our upcoming month and gave you an overview of my personal marketing calendar and how I plan on working the business. Um, and I share that with you guys so that you can get an idea and you can duplicate it. Um, but lots is happening this month. We are our month before summer. We've got some awesome challenge pack specials this month that are focusing on our boy, Shanti. Um, and if you've been with us since the beginning, you know T25 is a big favorite as well as Insanity, Insanity Max 30 and now size. And so we have some great challenge pack specials. So today I want to share with you guys, uh, just talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about uh, the specials post that I did, the leadership ladder, and um, as promised, I'm going to share with you guys some more nuggets from the Insane Productivity Live Unplugged session that Phil and I had attended last week. So uh, let's get down to business. Um, so first, uh, I want to make sure, as I touched on, it's Shanti Month. And I have done a huge post that's in our Facebook family page um, on how to talk about and about educating yourself on the program. So if you've never done Insanity Max 30 or if you've never done a size workout um, to go into Beachbody On Demand, do one of those workouts, check it out for yourself, see what it's like, share about it. Um, and educate yourself in the coach online office. I gave you a couple of easy simple scripts to use in that post and a great little graphic to show you what the specials are this month which is the size and insanity max 30 challenge packs as well as the kickstart challenge packs. So check those out familiarize yourself. Hello. Hi. Yourself. Um, familiarize yourself with it and um, make sure you're educating yourself. And that doesn't go just for the product specials of this month, but it's the specials for every month. Anytime there's a product or a program or something you have not used or you have not done, making sure you're going into the coach online office and you are checking out your products toolkits on each of those things. You'll have, uh, talking points, there's videos, um, and lots of things that you can share with your coaches, your customers, with your general social media audience. So that's the big takeaway there is just educate yourself, always be learning um, about what is available, what is best for your coaches and your customers based on their goals and their needs. So we have products for everyone. So making sure you're doing that. Um, and the second thing I want to talk about is the leadership ladder. As you may be familiar if you've been a coach for more than a minute, there is rank advancement that we recognize, which is the first step is your coach, and then you become emerald, and then there's ruby, diamond, star diamond, and beyond. Um, so I don't want you, you – we're going to still be recognizing that. But I want you to get familiar with the leadership ladder because if you are a coach – just to love on people and be a great coach, y'all should be that for a reason. But if you all want to also make money in your business, the leadership ladder is the roadmap to how to make money. When I became a coach, my coach just said, just help people and hit success club. That was her big thing. And then she said, okay, go Emerald so that you could open up your business center and get free leads. Okay, now go Diamond so you can increase your team cycle bonus that you get. Um, so she just gave me little steps here and there, and I told her, okay, well, what does five-star look like? What does an elite team look like? And she couldn't really map it out for me, and the truth is it looks different for everyone. But if you're interested in earning the maximum amount of money you can at every level starting at coach, it starts at the leadership ladder, and when the leadership ladder – really starts with hitting success club. So that's just a part of it. You're hitting success club, you're bringing on new coaches that are also hitting success club or at least getting success club points on the board. Um, that is going to show you, and then you have your weak leg volume. 
All of that is explained in your coach online office. You go to, um, I wrote it out. You go to your news and training tab. And then on the left hand side, you click on leadership ladder and there'll be a diagram um, where it starts off and you, you start out as a business starter, then you become a team builder, then a team leader and an organizational leader. And then the highest level is executive leader. And the cool thing attached to each of those is it gives you about how much in commissions you should be making that month in bonuses or just in commissions. Um, and you have, you're hitting success club five at least in your business. Your highest paid rank uh, is guesstimated. So as a coach, you're a business starter. As an emerald, you should be a team builder. Diamond, you should be a team leader two-star, an organizational leader, and five-star plus an executive leader. But of course, you could be anywhere in that leadership ladder regardless of your rank. So you could be a business starter as a diamond practically if none of your coaches are hitting success club and you have zero weak leg volume. So you, to get into team builder, you have to have 200 um, team volume for your weak leg and two coaches hitting at least one success club point or more. So that would bring you to a team builder and then beyond. But so this gives you a very, very spelled out roadmap on how you're actually gonna earn money in these ranks versus just hitting the ranks. So um, just trying to focus more on not being rank focused. And if you listen to this week's national wake-up call with Christine, Christina Delgado. She covers the leadership ladder and she covers um, how she got out of a rut and got out of massive embarrassing debt uh, building this business. So she shares all that, it's awesome. So I definitely highly, highly recommend you all check that out. So success club is still very, very important because you're helping people get to their goals. You're bringing on new coaches that are getting towards their goals as well. That's going to be an indicator of growing of a growing business. So you want to check that out. And you can only move up the leadership ladder if you're hitting success club. And of course, if you're hitting success club, you're actually building a business and you're earning money. You're paying you're paying yourself or you're getting your Shakeology for free. At least you're offsetting that cost at minimum. Um, okay, so. Those are that. And then so last, I want to I wanted to kind of go breeze through those things a little bit um, and talk about insane productivity. Uh, the first thing that I want to share is um, with our at the meeting, we did this thing called a digital addiction assessment. And I have the PDF for this, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. And what I want you to do, it's uh, one page here and then one page there, and then it gives you your diagnosis of how addicted you are to distractions, <laughs> your digital distractions, including your Facebooking, your um, email checking, your cell phoning, everything. So um, I'm gonna post that so you guys can go through and see where you're at. And depending on where you're at, I mean, everybody's going to have some sort of an addiction, I promise you. Like, it just is. And it's funny, the levels, clean as a whistle, social drinker, coffee fiend, chain smoker, pothead, crackhead, or permafried. So you'll find out where you are. And um, if you want help on this, I can share with you the 12-step plan to recovery. <laughs> um but it is really interesting how distracted we are by social media. And since, or not social media, just that's one of the, the things, but just our digital addictions, like always needing to have our phone. And um, he shared a lot of interesting facts of how people keep checking their phone, to see if they got messages. He said, that's just like picking up your landline and going, is anybody there? No, okay. Is anybody there? No? Okay. That's like how he equated and it was just hilarious because it's so true because we'll just be like, ah, okay, maybe. And the phone's not buzzing or making a noise and we still check to see if anybody's sent us a message. And something I've been trying to do is just have more set times when I'm actually checking that stuff um, and putting my phone in airplane mode, which is uh, just sliding 
my thing and set in that little airplane so that I'm not getting any distractions when I'm doing a Zoom meeting like this, when I'm uh, actually doing my power hour. It's a great thing to put your phone on airplane mode so you, you're not tempted by distractions. Um, it's one way to help you minimize that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna share is how he talks about once you clear, clear your distractions and you create more space for focus, um, on your work. He talks about developing your superpowers and um, and it, it, Developing your superpowers doesn't mean literally putting on a cape and flying like Superman. It's stop trying to be so clever and and just be productive because uh, Being productive is like the hardest thing for us to do because we want to be so clever and find some cool way when, we're, when it's essentially reinventing the wheel when you could just Use the wheel and move your vehicle forward. So he talks about the Pareto 80-20 rule, where 80% of your effects come from 20% of the causes. And just focusing on, like, it takes 20% to get 80% of the return. And so you're focusing on what's called the leverage curve. Um, and, he, and he says that we've been always focusing on the bell curve that goes like this but we really need to be focusing on the leverage curve. And I think I have a pretty little picture of it. Let me see. I think I do, I think I do. Of course, while I'm talking, I can't find it. But it's a cool little graphic of what it looks like. Here it is. Here's the leverage curve, right? So you can see right here, and also, if you look at this, this is like also the compound effect, right? So over time, you're just doing the things, doing the things, doing the things, and then bam, it spikes, right? But when it spikes, it goes crazy out of control. That's the compound effect. But this is also the leverage, um, the leverage curve. So in the beginning, the loudest, easy, trivial things Take, can take all of your attention and you could spend a lot of time doing it with little results. So this is the results right here. And this is like the effort. If you just stay right here doing the distracting things that are easy to do, but not actually moving your business forward, like inviting people to see the business or inviting somebody to your challenge group, those are going to create more spiky things, right? But if you're just getting distracted by the little things that are easy to do, which like we just love to make a cool picture or we want to uh, watch another video. Those are easier to do, but they're not going to yield the big results. Um, where we need to focus on the silent part and the vital things. And so you got to define what are those vital things in your business and then you need to create a system around doing it. And so I had talked about on my, my, uh, my video last week was the vital things are the vital behaviors in your business. And it starts with inviting, 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 uh, inviting and connecting. You want to think of inviting as connecting with other people, increasing your network, um, inviting people to be your friend. And you don't always have to be talking about Beachbody because you're a normal person who has other interests. But thinking of what are your three to five interests outside of Beachbody? that you like those things you should be posting on too so for me i like to knit um, i like spending time with my nieces and nephews i love my dogs i like to cook so you can share different things about yourself if you're a mom or if you're a dad or if you own a different type of business or you love do-it-yourself projects or you love dancing i don't know whatever it is those are other things you should be posting about as well and not only that, on Facebook, joining those interest groups and building connections and networks there. Again, it's not an overnight thing, no. But you're building relationships and creating people who are in your cold market, you're adding them to your warm market by building that relationship with them and actually sharing that thing it is that you have in common. So stop trying to be so clever and think about activating that leverage curve for yourself and what are what is that hard thing that you don't want to do that you're focusing on you don't want to do and is it inviting um 
another thing I, I know I've been talking a lot about the go giver. I'm reading go givers sell more right now. I read the go giver and that's the, that's the, uh, another book in the series. And he talks about if you're afraid to talk to someone or if you're afraid to do something in your business, it's about you and it's not about the other person who you're trying to serve. So getting yourself out of the equation and your own fear of what they think of you or what you think of you or who knows what of you, don't make it about you. It's not about you. It's about you serving and providing the best service you can and adding value to that other person and thinking about when you're um, selling something to them is not like how can I sell them, how can I convince them, how can I close them. You wanna think how can I serve them, how can I add value to them. Maybe they won't buy a challenge pack, but you're gonna leave them with a feeling of something positive. And that's how, how you have a win-win situation is really how you make that person feel good about themselves. You talk about things that you have in common, you find that common rapport, that common ground, you be a human being, and they're gonna develop to know, like, and trust you and want to do business with you when they have that need in their life. But you need to continue to put it out there. You can't just put it out there once and be like, I did it once, it didn't work. You gotta keep being consistent. Again, that compound effect putting it out there every day. I can't tell you how many people I just ran into this weekend when I went to church were like, oh my gosh, I love your posts. I'm eating eggs and greens for breakfast now because you always post about it. Really? I don't think you've ever liked one of my pictures. That's how I'm thinking in my head. Like for real, that I'm actually influencing what you're eating for breakfast. So you just keep putting it out there. You keep being consistent. You keep being you. People are watching. Whether they like or comment, they probably aren't, but they're seeing it and they're seeing you consistently do it so that when you keep consistently posting and you invite within those posts, they're going to be like, you know what? Now's the time. Now's the time. So you don't want to think of this as a short-term plan. This is a long-term strategy of continuing to put yourself out there, put yourself out there, add value, add value, add value be positive. There's so many ways to add value to people, sharing a recipe, sharing your experience, uh, making them laugh. I mean, I, I go over this over and over again, but repetition is key. So I'll keep sharing it. Um, all right. So then he talks about building your no system. So when you say no to the wrong things, you have room for the right things. So if you don't like saying no, then say yes to the right things. Uh, there was a, what did he say? Where's the thing that he talked about? Yes. He talks about, uh, oh, I can't find it. But anyhow, he talked about if you want to say yes, think about saying yes to your family. Say yes to your kids, your husband. Say yes to your business. Say yes to yourself and your goals. So if you're feeling like, I don't want to say no, you have to figure out what's more important to you. What are your priorities with this business, with growing this business? Why did you become a coach? What is it that you want to achieve this month, the next three months, six months, this year? You don't even have to think out like five or ten years. That, that was always so hard for me to think about. But just thinking about what is it you want to have happen in your business in the next 30, 60, 90 days, what do you need to say yes to today? What actions do you need to say yes to? What systems, what do you need to apply to say yes to in your business so you can say no to the wrong things and be mission driven and not just output driven? So doing that, scaling it. Okay, building that no system, creating insane focus by your success vitals. I talked about that. So the inviting product of the product, doing the workouts, committing to the workouts. And if you're not doing a program, even if you want to do the beach body on demand du jour, if you're not sticking to something consistently, you don't have anything to share consistently and people aren't seeing you as really serious at what you're doing. So why do they even want to join you? So it might be, you know, you might need to check yourself kind of and just look at like, what am I doing? Am I putting something out there that's consistent? And am I doing what I would want my challengers to do or my own coaches? So something I ask myself is if my coaches 
if my challengers, either one, do what I did today, will they be successful? Will my challengers be successful if I ate clean, if I ate a cheeseburger, if I had a brownie, or if I, you know, threw my menu out the window, or if I stick to it, how, will they be successful? My coaches, if I invited people, if I added to my network, if I'm a product of the product, if I'm uh, showing recognition, if I am doing the vital behaviors, if I'm doing that, will my coaches be successful if they did the same thing? So something to ask yourself, flipping that script, looking yourself in the mirror and being honest with yourself. Only you know the truth, right? It's always the honor system in life. You only know the truth. And your business will grow as you face those hard challenges. It's hard. I mean, trust me, I don't, I don't love working out. Let's be straight up. I don't love it. I don't like, I'm not like, woohoo, I'm so excited. Phil is literally more the driver. So there's our little dirty little secret is that he's more the driver because he's like, okay, let's do it. So it helps to have that accountability and to have my challenge groups that I see them doing the workouts. I'm like, okay, I better do it because I'm the one who has to be the example, right? So building those systems, building those ways, taking your energized, whatever it is to get you motivated, get you doing your workouts or inspire you to do it on the day, especially on the days you don't want to. Not every day I don't want to, but it's not like I'm, you know, I will do, if you've seen any of my pull-up videos, I will do anything I can to put it off to the very last little bit <laughs> to do those things. So setting, figuring out what those priorities are, and those systems and creating that focus, like I said, using the airplane mode on your phone, figuring out things you need to maybe cut out from your life, like your little give up list is something he, he had asked, like, what is it I really want? And you list out three things. And then what do I want to be world class at? That to me was a really big thing. Like, huh, we all have this one life to live. And we have Olympians, we have Bill Gates, we've got Oprah's. We could all easily be any of those people. It takes that amount of focus. That's, that's the big, huge thing. And then deciding what it is you really want to be world class at, and then letting your actions follow that. So it's like, okay, what I really want, what do I want to be world class at? And then what will I give up to get what I really want? That was on his uh, my give up list. I can share that with you guys too if you wanna go through that exercise. Um, here's a quote. It's better to be world class at a few things than mediocre at many. Ouch. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm mediocre at a lot of things. Um, so if you guys wanna look at that, you can. I can share that with you guys. Um, and then the last thing, just kinda creating, uh, well, two more things, kind of, they tie together. So figuring out your vital functions. Greatness isn't in the mastery of everything, but in the few vital things. So he talks about what is it that I do to make it rain that basically delivers the bottom, bottom line results? What are the most important functions I contribute to the success of my organization? What are the functions that rely upon my unique superpowers? So those are, the, he gives you a list of 10, and out of that 10, you pick what are the most important three. And then out of the three, you pick the most important one. It's, it's, a, it's tough. And then you want to double down on your top three and your top one vital functions. And then you have other functions that, do not, that are not in your top three. And then you delete or you delegate them. So that's another... Um, workshop or work, worksheet that he gave us and you it's an interesting thing to write out all these things you you think you have to do but then when you actually look at your business and what your priority is and what your goal is and you think I can't outsource this or I can't have somebody else do this that's what you need to focus on um, you definitely cannot outsource your workouts Trust me. <laughs> and then the last thing, once you figure those things out and you kind of go through your mind, what are your top three priorities? What are you trying to accomplish in your business? What is it that you really want out of coaching? Then you want to build your rituals. So he talks about bookending your day. So you create your morning routine, which is 
you wake up, you have a drink of water, you go have some tea, maybe you do a workout or you stretch or you, whatever it is, um, you maybe do some journaling, maybe do some meditating, whatever your morning routine is, you keep that. You wake up at the same time, you keep a little morning routine to kind of get you going in your mode. Um, and then you bookend it with an evening routine. So you get morning routine and your evening routine. And if you get your morning and your evening routine down, then you can feel good about your day. And a whole lot of shiz happens in the middle of the day, right? Whether it's carpool, going to work, meetings, whatever it is, dealing with family issues, all that can happen in the middle here. But you want to maybe get up a little earlier to have that time in the morning. Um, and then making sure you're winding yourself down that last hour or maybe a little less before bed and you just have your review of the day, so to speak. So, and then you're planning for the next day type of thing. So I have been doing my morning rituals and my evening ones, and it's helped me feel so much more in control of my days because every night I look at my calendar for the next day of client appointments that I have, any uh, Zoom meetings I need to be on. Um, and it gives me time to mentally prepare for them and then schedule in my schedule, once I have all my appointments that I must be at already or attend or whatever, then I schedule in my power hour and my workout if my workout's already not scheduled in there. And then I know I got at least one power hour going into my day, if not two or three, depending on what the day looks like that day. So that's been helping me feel more in control. And then so in the morning, I will go through my morning routine where I get up. And I've been following uh, what's called the Miracle Morning, and it's the SAVERS. It's a it's a um, acronym. So the S stands for silence, like silent time, meditation, prayer. And I just sit in my chair. I usually get up at a little after five, and I sit in my chair before the sun rises. And I just sit there, and I have a little quiet time to just kind of settle into the day as I watch the sunrise, and. Um, then the next one's affirmations. And I've been finding that after my silent time, and since it's so early, if I do my affirmations just in my head, it's a little, my, my brain wanders and I don't focus. So I've been writing them down in a notebook. I've been writing down my affirmations for the day to get my mind right. Um, and then the third thing that I do, S-A-V, V is vision. So you set whatever it is your big goal is, like I said, your 30, 60, 90 day goal, even a year, whatever it is, what you want to accomplish by the end of this year. I spend some time with visioning that out and imagining it and, and trying to feel what it's going to feel like spending that time to set my cast, my vision for myself, my business, for my challenges, for my marriage, for my family. Um, and what I want that to look like. And then the E is for exercise. I don't do that in the morning. I do that a little bit later um, after all of this. Usually I'll do it late morning. Not late morning. It depends on my schedule. Each day it's different. Sometimes it's 7, sometimes it's noon, whatever. Um, so I save that for later. R is for reading. That's when I'll spend 30 minutes. I'll set my timer on my phone. And I'll spend 30 minutes reading my personal development. Right now it's Go Givers, Sell More. That's a current book. I'm almost done with it. But I'm only limiting myself to 30 minutes because I can just read for hours. So I have to limit myself so I can get more stuff done the rest of the day. So I, and I'm finding I'm getting a lot done in just that 30 minutes when I'm limiting myself. So I put the timer on. And then the S stands for scribe which is writing, which I already do when I'm doing my affirmations. So I could even maybe add a little more writing after I've done my reading if I have any other ideas that pop in my head or just thoughts for the day. Um, and that's been my morning ritual. And then usually once I'm done with that, Phil will be up and we have tea together and we'll either work out or not. Um, oh, and and actually before I have the tea and, and – um, and have morning time with Phil, I will calibrate my day where I'll think, I'll again, look at my schedule like I did in my evening ritual. Uh, I'll look at what I have planned and I will maybe make adjustments if I need to, like maybe we need to do our workout later or maybe the doctor called and changed an appointment for the dogs like they did today. Um, or maybe I wanted to make time to connect with a coach or a customer or whatever. I can make sure I add that in my day or just 
just again re-review what I have planned for the day and get my mind right. So I'm setting my attention, my intentions for the day, and then I try to get a post in the morning while I'm kind of in that little euphoric, happy mood, uh, feeling good, very positive mood. So I try to do a post then, have my tea with Phil. We calibrate together. We should kind of talk about what our day is going to look like. And we either do our workout or he goes to work or, and then I see a client. So it just depends. So I've been doing that in my morning. And then the evening, like I said, I'm writing out what I'm doing uh, after dinner, having tea and just kind of relaxing. So there's not a lot of digital uh, interaction after and I also try to make sure I stop looking at my Facebook posts and feeds and note messages and everything you know within an hour before bed so that my my brain can calm down and uh, I can go sleep so that's the evening routine is a little harder for me but the morning I have control of so it's helping me feel more in control of my day like just once I get that done I feel really accomplished so that coupled with your power hour um, will make you feel really successful in creating those success rituals. I'll talk more about the success rituals and other things as I develop them um, and talk more about them, but I'll share some of these handouts with you guys if you want. I'll wait for requests. I'm not gonna just post them in there because I don't wanna just clog our, um, our file section with a bunch of stuff if you guys are not going to tap into it. So I definitely, want to do that if you're tapping into it. So, all right guys, so check out the May specials. It's going to be a great month. Um, making sure you're tapping into the leadership ladder, educating yourself on what that means and setting some goals for yourself this month. So maybe you're at the coach level and you want to be a team builder. So, or maybe you're a team builder and you want to move on to a business leader. So, um, look at what it is and then reach upline, even if I'm not your personally sponsored coach, or reach to your upline, and let's help you map that out and game plan how you could accomplish that goal. That's what you're here for. We are a team. We work together. So there's that, and make sure you're checking into that, hitting Success Club this month. All right, I hope you have a great day. I'm so excited. Thank you for taking the time to check this out, and go out there and share your light.